everyone. Welcome. It's nice to see you. so many wonderful faces this morning. We're very excited to be here to talk about the Here For You campaign from the Marketing Committee of MCEA. We are here with Susan from CISO. Um, I was going to say, I think we have a yep. side. <laughs> I was going to say, you can I see am, it there, yeah. <laughs> I am Tiffany Clifton. I'm the director for Orono Public Schools and the co-chair for the marketing committee for MCEA. And I'm Nicole Rasmussen. I'm the manager of the Adventure Club program for ISC 728 and also co-chair of the marketing committee for MCEA. And as I said, I'm Susan Brott with CISO Communications, and we are super excited to be partnering with the marketing committee, and we've had a fun year yeah. Like, yeah, of working on this, so absolutely. So, well, you all know, we don't have to do this. You all know you're in MCEA. We're good. OK. <laughs> yeah. um, so for those of you that don't know, um, the Marketing Committee for MCEA is really here to provide additional resources and services for our members um, to have those connect connections between um, the board goals for the um, association and to support members through marketing um, their programs and um, different avenues throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my, what I want to say on the next is, oh. okay. okay, so um, we didn't practice, I sorry. I started <laughs> with the marketing committee about, I don't know, five years ago or something like that, and I was fairly new to MCEA at that point, um, and I was asked to join, and at that point in time, we were tasked with refreshing the best thing media campaign, um, which was very old, very dated, um, and so we worked with um, a really awesome marketing uh, Firm at the time, uh, Tiffany, they helped us to basically rebrand that play again, um, come up with a new logo, a new color scheme, everything like that. And then unfortunately, we all know what happened in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic hit, everything came to a screeching halt. Um, and then last year, uh, basically, hey, we're back, let's do this again. We want to carry this into that's Media 2.0. Um, and so that's basically where we met CISO, hit the ground running on let's take what we did before and let's take it one step, two steps, however many steps further um, so that we can continue to meet the needs of our members um, across the state. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and a huge um, thank you to the marketing committee. We have one here. Carly is here with us. Too. Hey. Um, I've only seen you on Zoom. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had some great members that have recently Acknowledgement and a shout out for Chris and Pat. Um, and we are always looking for new members. So if you are interested and want to join the marketing committee, um, please reach out and we would love to have more members um, in representation across the state. So I'm say, good plug, absolutely. So we have a lot of fun. So just a little bit about CISO Communications. Um, if you're familiar, CISO itself, pronounced CISO, Center for Effective School Operations, we basically help. Uh, on the operations side of school districts. So what we do is we do, as you can see, we have divisions in communications, facilities, finance, technology, HR, and transportation. Transportation is where they got their start. Um, so some of you might be familiar with that. Uh, communications is fairly new, I would say, in the last three, four years. I actually was a school district communications director for 20 plus years. I actually got my start in school districts with in White Bear, Go Bears, uh, in community ed and recreation and running a bunch of different programs um, and got to work with Steve Porter there. But uh, so really have been doing school district communications. So this is very close to my heart to be able to partner with community ed. But we work, we're headquartered in Minneapolis, but we're very much of a national company. I have colleagues in many states. We have contracts in many states. So that's been really interesting. But we are super happy to be here to be able to help MCEA. You can go ahead. Um, yeah, so today we will get into a little bit of background of how we got to our um, Math Community at 2.0, is what we like to, to call it. Um, <laughs> how here for you, um, the marketing campaign, what it looks like. You guys will get to have a sneak peek at the microsite, which is um, specific for members. And um, so mm -hmm. we'll get into all of that. We'll look at what is on the site, including the toolkit, um, some best practices and tips. And then we'll talk about next steps of when this is going to roll out. And really the goal with this was to provide not only tools, but strategies as well. And so it's been really wonderful to work with CISO and their um, creative strategy, their strategic thinking when we're talking about social marketing or social media marketing um, and different strategies to connect 
um, even with Rowdy and the mm -hmm. their legislative opportunities. So. Absolutely. So now it's probably going to be the Susan show, so I apologize. Um, so a little bit of background from our perspective about how we got here. So there's just a little bit of a timeline. So a little over a year ago, actually about a year and a half ago, uh, the marketing committee put out an RFP requesting marketing and PR uh, services. Uh, that's when we got engaged with them, and we were very excited to do that. We developed a comprehensive strategic marketing plan in June of 2021. It's a big plan. It's a multi-year plan. It's not something that can be done in a few months. So we worked with um, the marketing committee, the marketing committee worked with the board, and we then said, okay, so what could we do given budget? <laughs> what, what are the things that we wanna focus on first? And just like we always say in school districts with, school, with communications, we start internal. And so we thought, let's start with the members. How can we help members? And so this is both, uh, and then you'll see, I'm sorry, I'll jump into it in a minute, but on, and then in, um, we started putting together the campaign messaging in May. Some, a lot of you probably saw some emails coming out in your member newsletter saying, hey, share your stories, share your testimonials. Thank you for those. We got about 70 responses. We're working on about 20, 25 stories right now. We're always collecting more stories because the key component of our marketing plan is positive storytelling. So one of the things that we thought that part of the research that we did was with the That's Community Ed, we actually did a survey. A lot of you might have taken that survey to say, what does That's Community Ed mean to you? How have you been using it? And what we got back from it because of pandemic and we didn't get to actually move forward with a lot of stuff at that time. We weren't working with them at that time. But and I actually remember that's community at 1.0. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's pink and blue. And yeah. And I think I still have a bag. Um, but it was definitely about how can we go beyond and just saying, here's what we offer to really talking about the impact and getting at that emotional heartstring. So you'll see a little bit of that. So we put that together. We helped uh, the implementation of phase one then was really about the campaign and the messaging, legislative advocacy. So we're helping to just sort of, and really with that, we're just putting together some platform pieces and stuff. Come on in, there's plenty of seats. Um, <laughs> and then we're continuing, as we said, to gather stories and testimonials. In September, we really put those campaign materials together. So the marketing committee has reviewed it, the executive council has reviewed it, so you can kind of see where we're at. This is a continuous work in progress. And so we're super excited to be here today because we've been wanting to share it for a long time. So that's kind of the background on how we got here. So what is the statewide marketing campaign, right? So. You will see on the right side, here's some examples of how we've taken that that's community ed. We wanted to make sure that it was still present. That was one of the key pieces. But how do we bring it to life a little bit more than just, I think we said, we want it to be more than a stamp, more than something that's just on a mug. We want it to actually be alive and be marketing focused. So we came up with this We're Here For You campaign idea. And I'm going to read it aloud because we feel like it. Nicole went, oh. So <laughs> in life, our needs ebb and flow. Sometimes there's rhyme, oh geez, my little get up and move, Susan. I'm sorry, that's my. <laughs> this is what happens when you sit at a desk all day. Uh, sometimes there's rhyme and reason to our circumstances, sometimes there is not. But when life allows us to develop a skill, when the only thing missing is additional training, when you're new in town and need familiarity, we're here for you. That's community ed, right? Like that's what you are. You all do, and I know that we don't like to use the term, you know, was it? womb to tomb or birth to cradle or cradle to grave. I mean, like we try to move beyond that. So it's like, you know, zero to 85 plus, right? So that's probably more appropriate. Um, but we're here for you no matter what. That's what community ed is about. And having worked in other states, now it's like this is so unique to Minnesota and it's such a benefit to be able to have. So we really wanted to be able to showcase that a little bit more. So what are some headline examples? You saw one already. Ready for a new challenge? We're here for you. That's really about like, we want a new activity, right? You, you have these different programs and these classes that's really activity-based. We have some education-based programs. So the headline is really, you're a lifelong learner, we're here for you. You wanna you know, take a computer class, you wanna learn something new. New around here, we're here for you. So that's really about that belonging, right? That's how are we bringing people in? How are we making those connections? So those are just some examples. Again, we're not designed those. So when then we really looked at the campaign and the design concept, what we wanted to do, we wanted to really focus on those headlines. So we have some examples for you that we'll be showing. 
And part of what we hope this does is that this is an MCEA marketing, like, hey, MCEA is a cool thing. But also, how can you take this and use it locally? How can you start spreading the word? How do you start building that momentum so that throughout the state, people understand what community ed is and they understand what you're about? So we knew that we wanted to really focus on those headlines, those things that can grab people. We knew that we wanted to, yes, incorporate the That's Community Ed logo. That was part of our research to say, is it resonating? It was resonating enough. We just needed to bring it to life. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that we're using lots of imagery. If at all possible, you use real photos. We have stock photos, obviously, that we're using. Some of you did send in a couple of photos and videos, and so we're excited to be able to put those up. Um, I know there was somebody, oh my gosh, I forgot where she was, Jessica. I don't know if she's in here, but she was like, I was on the Buffalo Community Ed catalog when I was a kid and I learned how to play tennis and now she's working in Community Ed in Northern Minnesota or something. I mean, it's just really fun, right? So those kinds of things. And so we wanted to really personalize it. So we have a campaign microsite and you'll be able to see it here. I know I'm teasing a lot. We'll be able to hear it, but it's like what we thought of with this microsite is essentially it's an extension of the MCA website, but it allows us to get in there and play around with it and visually really brand it with the campaign. And um, we're seeing this as, and I thought, I think Tiffany was one who said it, it's like we need a hub. We need a hub where members can go to access materials, to download things, to look at best practices, all that kind of stuff. So this is a hub. We're not giving you the URL just yet, um, but we will show it to you. And I'm working with Jean, superstar Jean Johnson, on communication plan. And so she will be sending it out in member news and other things so that you can have that link. The reason we're not sharing it out for everybody, it's a very easy URL, but the reason we're not doing that is that we want this to really be a member benefit. We don't want this just so that everyone can access it. We're trying to say, MCEA is paid for this. This is for its members. We're really going to do that. Eventually, we're going to grow it out to the greater public, but we're starting internal right now. So this is your benefit, right, to be an MCEA member. Well, teaser if you're not already. So what's the purpose of this microsite? Purpose is to provide a campaign overview. And when we talk about the campaign, that's the marketing campaign. It's about sharing those impact stories. We're really focused on that positive storytelling. So if there's one thing you can take away today, even if you don't access these, is to start telling your story. Don't just say, here's a list of the classes. And I know that when we first started meeting with the marketing community, it's like, what do you do? And it's like, well, here's all the products. We do adult enrichment. We do adults with disabilities. We do youth enrichment. We do school age care. We, do, you know, we, know, we know all of that. But what's the impact of it? People need to understand that to, to get in. That's part of the marketing grab. And then we're provided you with a toolkit. And we're super excited about the toolkit because you can download graphics. So you can download them as they are. We've also, how many of you use Canva? Yeah, I figured. So we understand that not everybody is using Adobe Creative Suite. It's a little bit more technical. We do that from the design perspective, and those were the original designs. We know that Canva is a great resource. So we have downloadable Canva templates that you can use to put your own logo on there to customize it, how to drop in a photo. We have a how-to guide. So there's some things that are locked, right? So you don't get to mess around with it too much because we still want it to have that here for you look and feel. But you want to change the colors to be orange and black. You can do that. You want to put the White Bear logo on it. You can do that. You can pop in your own photo of somebody that people will recognize. So we've got that for you. We've also got tips and practices for you about how to do that. So let's go live, should we? see the microsite. I hope you're all as excited as we are. So starting today, it's live. And like we said, look for the link in the member news. Um, so you will see this is the That's Community Ed, right? So Community Ed is impactful. Go through here to see what it, it provides a place to belong, creates partnerships. Those were our, our three key campaign themes. It was about how are we creating impact in the community? How are we partnering with the community? And how are we making sure people feel like they belong in the community? Those are your big three key themes that we came back with. So as you scroll down, you'll see you know, it's here for you, our members, to help highlight the value and impact of community education programs across the state. MCEA members are connectors in their communities. And the Here For You marketing campaign will help you enhance that connection through positive storytelling and engagement. So that's what we hope you will do. We have resources for you. 
to help you promote your own community education program as well as the broader statewide community education because we know it's in every school district, right? So it, it's, we know that no matter where you are, you should be able to do it. There's links here at the bottom, which is the same as all above. And then we have some calls to action about, and really our calls to action are to access that toolkit and to share your stories. So let's learn a little bit more about here for you. So you're right around the corner. You're there. You're in. You're where people are. And so we want to make sure that you know that. There's our little ebb and flow. Community education is to create opportunities for growth, education, and belonging that connect you a bit more closely to the heart of life. Right? It's starting to get a little more emotive. That's our goal. Some samples of some stories. And these are stories that you all shared. So we're talking about, and we just have a few up there right now. But again, our marketing expertise comes in and says stories are what draw people in pretty graphics are good photo you know but stories I want to hear about somebody that I can relate to so find those stories of your community education programs and so we have some samples here right so you can read some stories from your neighbors but for example here's one about community education help me find lifelong friendships you can click on that you can see the longer story about how it did, I was, you know, I was in community ed, early childhood, I was able to participate and meet other new parents and friends, and those are my friends for life, right? Those are, these are stories and testimonials that you hear in your programs all the time. We just need to capture them to help tell people. I know you all do a lot of evaluations. I know you all have those brand ambassadors for your community ed programs who are, who are cheering for you. We want to be able to, to share those more. And, the, you know, right now we're just using some stock imagery. So... We provide uh, life-changing opportunities for all, right? Even though her, this was about a, a mild disabilities, wanted to exercise class, even though her disabilities are mild, she didn't feel comfortable in the Adults with Disabilities program. Her personal care assistant encouraged her to join an adult education class, and participating in this class has changed her life. We didn't make these up. These are from you. So we have lots of more stories like that. We do have a share stories here. So this is where you can go in. What's your story? You have some things we were talking. So when we did the survey, and if you took part in it, you probably saw that we had uh, a lot of demographic questions at the beginning, because we wanted to make sure that we, we were pulling stories from every region around the state. We were pulling stories from all programs. We were pulling stories from big, big districts, little districts, right? So we wanted to make sure that we were pulling all that. We've got a pretty good representation that we'll be building on this website. What we're trying to figure out right now is, do we have them all on there at once? Do we rotate through them? How do we do that? So part of the communication plan that we're working on with the committee and with Jean is that, you know, here's some sample stories that you can pull. So just, we want it to be front of mind. We don't want it to be a one shot today and then you don't think about it again. So here's the link to the same survey about sharing your story with us. But I'll go back to presentation for a second. Um, so as you can see, it's there. Um, and we're super, we're really excited. We think it looks fresh and clean and um, you know, a little more energizing than the MCA website. And I can say that because I know Jean says the same thing. So um, you know, a little more engaging. Um, but it was kind of fun because the refresh of the That's Community Ed gave us some fresh kind of modern colors to work with, which was really great. So that was awesome. So we talk about this toolkit, um, and these are the assets that we want to be able to share with you. The purpose of the toolkit so, or the, uh, that's online is that we have a how-to. So how do you use this toolkit? You know, sometimes we're just like, here have a bunch of stuff and you're like, great, I am a community ed director and I'm looking at my budget for fun for and I don't really have time to figure out marketing right now. We have a how to use it. We have some marketing best practices. Shameless plug, Bob Noid, who I work with at CISO Communications is upstairs at 10 o'clock talking about more marketing practices if you're looking for them called Beyond the Catalog. Okay, just thought I'd put that out there. Um, and then there's some social media best practices. We have a member on our team She's amazing. Of course, she's like 25. And she is 25, I think. Um, and she is, digs into, she can tell you everything about analytics. She's actually been on the phone with Meta. If you know what Meta is, it owns Facebook and Instagram. She lives in California. She starts talking and I go, uh-huh, we're just going to do whatever Julie does. But she understands the strat strategy, the analytics. So we have a breakdown of how to best use social media for you. How can you best use it? Maybe you have a community ed social media account, 
or maybe you just use the district account. I can tell you from being in districts and being uh, a lot of times the community ed department would be like, can you just promote this class? Yeah, I can, but it needs to be, that's not really what social media is, right? Like that's a flat post, we want engaging posts. And then we have a ton of downloadable resources. So let's go to the toolkit. Again, only available to members. Um, so how do we do this? Access your campaign. So we have a Here For You campaign toolkit. It's ready to use, there's templates and guides. How to use this toolkit, make sure that you kind of read through this and understand. We have access some templates. So let's look at some digital templates. You want ready to use graphics or do you want customizable graphics? So let's go to the customizable graphics you can see. And there's a template guide here you can see. Okay, remember like this is what you can change. You can change the photo, you can change the shape, you can change this photo. You can change this text. Maybe the headline isn't exactly what you want it to be. You want to add your logo down here. You can do that, okay? Those are all Canva templates. Um, so it shows you how to change it, to change out an existing photo. So we've put all that in there. How do you change the background? I don't want the blue. I want the you know, yellow background because we're in Burnsville or something. So you can do the text for that. You can change that. So we don't want you to be stretching things, changing sizes, doing wacky things like that because we want it still to, to look like it. But pretty soon, our hope is that you all are using this so much that people can go from community to community and see and feel this Here For You campaign. And legislators. And legislators, exactly. Um, so there's some stock images. So you can download there. We have ready to use graphics where you can just, here's some examples. Here's some social media graphics. What you can do is if you just want to pop that up, you know, sometimes I know when you run social media, you're like, I got nothing for today, right? The thing about social media is you got to keep posting. You can't just post once a week, right? So I need to keep posting. Here's some fillers. You can use these. It just sort of is talking about community ed in general. You want to put up some posters. These are 11 by 17. You can download them and print them yourselves, okay? So again, these, we have these as customizable as well. But we just have some samples here for you. You want to create a newsletter. I don't know, how many of you have like a newsletter that you use for community ed, like an e-newsletter or something? You can start using these banners. Again, you can customize them. So again, it's becoming, re it's becoming memorable for people. People start looking for it. It's part of that marketing and branding kind of piece that we have. So again, you can customize them. That's the graphics part. We also have some social media ideas. We just put in some ideas about here's some tips that you can use to find the stories in your community, right? Spotlight your youngest learners. Everybody loves kiddos, okay? I mean, as much as we love our older adult programs, it's the kiddos that draw people in, right? And especially if you can have a kiddo with a dog, even better, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because well, I do that because I'm working with a client right now. We're like, we have therapy dog programs. I'm like, great, here's a beautiful golden retriever with a fourth grader. It's awesome. Um, you know, focus on those things that are tangible and hands on, you know, <laughs> pictures that would just be like you all staring at the screen, not as engaging, but people who are doing a cookie bake, right? Like that's a traditional kind of thing. But I'm working in woodworking, or I'm working at a computer, or I'm working with other people and building STEM projects. Um, talk about your new neighbors. Bring people together with music. Music draws people in. Showcase the class. Give a tour. You know, so here's some different things to go beyond the catalog. And then here's some posts that you can do that you know, we've pulled from stories that we've gotten where we've just pulled off the names so you can use them. But you can say, Community Education provides Minnesota with a huge variety of services. It's never too late to learn for ABE, right? So here's some sample things that you can kind of build from for your stories if you're looking for them. And then also on the toolkit, we have some additional story sharing ideas. Find inspiration from your program, from other people. Find out what's using. I mean, you know, I know there's a little bit of competition between you all, but generally you're pretty focused on your community, right? So it's about figuring out, hey, gosh, I'm in Lakeville, but Burnsville ran this really cool thing, and we can do that. We'd offer that program, too. Let's let our community know that we do that. So... Think about that. Um, and then start building those stories. Talk to members. Talk to, you know, in your evaluations, I know that a lot of times, in, especially in like enrichment classes, we'll say, how was the class? Did it do? But see if you can pull some testimonials out this. Like, what would you tell another, if you were to encourage another person to participate in this program, 
what would you tell them, right? We've all taken those surveys. You just have to do it yourself. And can start to, it can be done with a Google form. It doesn't have to be a fancy thing. And then think about what are those unique partnerships? I think community ed is amazing and how they're able to bring together all those different people. I remember when I was in Edina and I would look at Val Burke and she'd be like, oh, I know so-and-so. Oh, I know so-and-so. I was like, great, Val, bring them together. We're doing this. Okay. So she just had all those connections and those partners, right? So how do you bring all of those together? So that's really what we want to make sure that we, we're doing okay, right? One time? Okay. The other thing about the toolkit that we want to talk about here are some best practices. And I have slides for this, but this is better looking. Um, so think about how you can write interesting course descriptions. As opposed, don't use, try not to use the passive voice, like in this course you will learn, right? I do that all the time when I'm doing presentations. In this presentation, participants will learn. Think about different ways of making the descriptions fun and exciting, you know, and, and more, more engaging. Um, focusing on what's that personal growth, Make the connections with the media. One of the pieces that we're working on that's in the next steps is that we're building a statewide media plan, so which is going to be like contacts all over, especially as a lot of our local community media outlets are folding, unfortunately. But those of you in greater Minnesota, radio is huge. It's a great opportunity for you to get on there. Maybe you can do it, and they're always looking for people. So maybe you have a monthly show, and the community director goes out and talks about what's going on in your program. But make connections with the media. Have them pitching stories. So um, just like I would do with the K-12 program that I was doing, I always tried to make sure that I was, I was marketing community ed as well. Because to me, it's all big one, one big umbrella, right? And I know there's a lot of times like you feel like the forgotten stepchild over here. But it's not. It's one big program. So partner with that. Um, figure out what those keywords are, especially in social media. Like, what are those words that are going to be tagged? And we have some more of that. Try to use photo and video as much as you can. I know a lot of times we just we like words, and I'm a words person, but I also know that people are looking on their phone and they're just scrolling like this, right? They're not reading. They're looking for bullets. They're looking for big things. So how can you pull those out and make that there? Um, a lot of this you're already doing. Um, Social media best practices. So we have some things, and we actually, I think there's a downloadable. Yes, this is great. So, um, so talk about, again, the impact, the partnership, and the belonging. But here's some best practices. I can go back to this. So this is here. Let's go to the, whoops. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, so I've kind of talked a little bit about this. One of the things that we've talked about, and I haven't even shared this with you yet, I think I might have shared it in an email yesterday, but we were talking about creating a hashtag for the Here For You campaign. If you just do hashtag Here For You, it's a lot of different things. So we didn't want to do that. <laughs> so we did MCEA, Here For You. Um, yeah, don't go into Twitter and type that unless, on, on, if you're on your school account, don't do that, okay? Uh, the IT department will be like, were you visiting? Yes, I'm sorry. So, but the MCEA here for you, um, and we thought about, you know, do we do a four or whatever? And we really wanted to stay true to our brand. But if you start putting things on social media, even if it's about your program, start using that hashtag so we can start building a community that's about community ed in Minnesota. Because that way, eventually, I hope to be able to go into Twitter or go into Instagram and type that hashtag, and I should see stories. I should see a whole bunch of posts and stories from different places. So that's one of the things that we're talking about. We've talked about you can use the graphics as they are. You can use customizable graphics. And then we really want you to think about and get inspired about your own stories. And there's so many great examples I was looking at here at MCEA of just different stories and things that are happening in different uh, departments and programs across the state. So these are the top 10 marketing tips. We already talked about them. Social media tips. So this is all platforms. There's also a link um, that I might pull up if we have time about the specific platforms. Again, this is my colleague, Julie. We call her J-Rod, Julie Rodriguez. Because uh, we have two Julies on our team, so she's J-Rod. Um, but J-Rod is awesome, she, but she put together some things. So when you think about the content on social media, be strategic. Put a calendar together. It's very easy for us to go, oh, I just need to pop something up. But if you can think ahead, and we know that community ed programming, just like K-12 programming, is cyclical. So you know that you know, when does the 
uh, catalogs coming out. You guys are working right now on your winter catalogs, I'm guessing, right? So start thinking about when would be a good time to start promoting that. Don't wait for the catalog to get mailed. Just start promoting it. Maybe there's teasers and you can say, coming soon, look in your mailbox, right? For those kinds of things. But we wanna be thinking strategically about how you can do that. You wanna show personality in social media. It's supposed to be an engaging platform. It's not another website. I can't tell you how many districts I work with and community ed programs, but districts in general that it's just like, I feel like it's just the website. It's just, you know, we just took the story and we flat. It's supposed to be engaging. It's supposed to be personality. You can have fun. You don't have to worry about, you know, grammar as much, right? It's not about, well, that should be a semicolon, not a comma. It doesn't matter in social media. They just, I mean, you don't want typos. But, you know, we just want to have that. Always, always, always use images and videos, please. Because if I, if you think about, I mean, I'm on my social media and I'm just kind of going, if it's not something visually appealing, I'm not stopping and looking at it. So you have to think about what those videos, and, and we have some specific things about videos that I can tell you about. Um, one of the things about subtitles for videos, especially if you're using the stories feature, do you all know what stories are on Instagram and Facebook? Okay. So if you're using stories, make sure you're using subtitles. Uh, J-Rod has a stat in the specific, but I think it's something like 60% of people or something like that don't actually watch the videos with the sound on. So make sure that, and I'll pull up the exact stat, but the majority of people are just scrolling and looking at it. And I think about that when I'm looking at videos on, on Instagram, I'm not a huge TikTok person, but I know that they do that there too. But when I'm looking at Instagram and I'm just watching the subtitles pop up, it's like, oh, I can do that because I don't have to worry about waking up my husband who's sleeping or something and I'm scrolling, right? So most people are not necessarily listening to the, so make sure that you got those subtitles there. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. Use clear call to action. Calls to action, by that we mean we want them to do something. Sign up. Register here. Call us today. Meet your neighbors, right? We don't want to just be like, we want to have a clear call to action. And then again, this is where we start getting into the analytics. Be scientific, strategic about what you're posting. Think about, go in and look at the analytics on your social media. When are people coming in and viewing it? You can see that, who they are. I mean, in traditional senses, and I'll get to that in a minute, but you know, Facebook and Instagram are where most of your, your uh, let's see, Gen Y, Millennial, Gen Z folks are. Baby boomers are generally not as much on Facebook, maybe on Facebook, because they're watching their grandkids, but they're not as much on, on Instagram. Um, but Twitter, I would say, is great for internal. If you're trying to engage your staff in the district, you're trying to engage other community ed people, most people are not on Twitter of your families and stuff. That doesn't mean you don't use it. You just have to think differently about it. I know when we first started doing social media way back in the day, you posted the same thing to every platform. And that's not necessarily what you should be doing right now, right? You need to think about who's your audience and when are they doing it? Because you can schedule your posts. So if I know that most of my parents that are in my programs and my school age care programs, my youth enrichment, most of them are going on at, they're going on at six o'clock at night, and, but you can see that when you go into Facebook. You can see when people are viewing it. So you need to kind of get a little scientific with it. And then think about engagement, right? I said, it's not a website. It's not static. People should be, you should be linking from your website to your social media platforms. And make sure that you have those little icons in your newsletters or whatever you're sending out. They are intended for engagement. So I know a lot of times people are like, well, what if they comment and they say something bad? It's that, that's why it's there, right? So we talk about make sure that you have strong social media guidelines. And I have dealt with districts, believe me, that have crazy, crazy, crazy people in their district <laughs> posting things on social media. But if you have strong rules of engagement, it can tell you when you can look at somebody and say, you have you know, violated our rules of engagement. This is why I'm high. Delete. We rarely delete a post, especially in school districts, because it's a public platform now. So think about that in terms of public data. I will hide posts if I have to, if it's inappropriate. But just because it's negative doesn't mean I'm hiding it. What you want to do with negative is you want to say, OK, they're negative. Why are they being negative? The best thing you can do is correct you as the district or you as the community ed program, you are the district, correct misinformation. Talk about facts. But you don't want to get into a back and forth with them. The best thing you can do is get those supporters that you have to do that for you. 
So find one of your champions and they can say, no, 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 my experience in this program was, that's how we get through that. Practice strong customer service skills, but what we mean on that, follow up to messages and comments. If somebody posts something on a, on a comment about how awesome this program was, thank you so much. I think about that on Yelp. Have you ever been on Yelp and you look at restaurant reviews or a hotel and it's like you post and when the restaurant comes in and says, thank you so much, we're so great, you know, we're so awesome that you had this. Or if it wasn't a great program or it wasn't a great meal or something like, we're so sorry, Can, you know, call us and let's talk about it. That shows me that they're paying attention, right? Otherwise it just feels like you're sending something out in a vacuum and I already talked about criticism. So what are we doing next? Um, oh, I wanna go back to pull up, we have time? We do have time. Yes. I wanna pull up those social media tips for sure, because those are, these are the things that I was like, I remember, I remember I was proofreading, I was like, oh, I didn't know that, thank you. Thank you, J-Rod, for telling me that. Um, oh, is it coming up? Here we go, oh, it's just down here. See, Sam changed this last night. So, Facebook, what do we have? Um, if they violate your social media guidelines, you know, err on the side of hiding, not deleting. We already talked about them. Only hide them if they're really egregious, okay? But it's, you need to also say why you're hiding them. So when you do that, you can send a message to them. Uh, set a profanity filter. Have you all set profanity filters on your social media? If you haven't, make sure that you do. Um, take advantage of the videos. So this is where we're saying Facebook Live videos are watched three times more than regular videos. So think about that when you're doing Facebook Live videos. Um, even Mark Zuckerberg has said that video is gonna be the most consumed content on the platform in the near future. So keep, keep posts short and specific. And this is where I was just like, okay, this is the kind of data that you go, yeah, go to J-Rod, she knows. 40 character posts, so that means very tight, right? You don't wanna be having, I was working with a client the other day and I read this and they're like, that's your Instagram post? It was like three paragraphs. It's like, what are you doing? Like that's not, you know, direct them to a story on your website. Um, so 40 character posts receive 80% more engagement than others. 80 character posts receive two thirds engagement over others. So think about how long your posts are, which is why we say images and videos are key. Facebook posting, Facebook posts asking questions between 100 to 109 characters drive more engagement. So if you're gonna ask a question for them, and this is where you can use polling features or survey features on your social media. And then when we talk about being strategic, I love this. Either think about the 80-20 rule. So 80% of your posts on social media should be used to inform, educate, and entertain. And 20% should be used to promote your brand. So think about always making sure that you're taking time to promote your brand. Or you can do the build a rule of thirds where you say one third should share ideas and stories, one third should be include personal actions in your, with your followers, and one third should promote your organization and brand. So you can pick one of those, but that's kind of a nice general rule when you're on Facebook, okay? Again, all of this is on this site, so you'll have access to it. Instagram, how is this different? Make sure that there's call to actions to your business profile, and if you don't know what your business or organization profile is, you see a lot of times on Instagram, people are really good at that, and they're influencers on Instagram, they'll say, there's a link in my bio too, and you go up, and that's where you can put those links, so you're saving space in the actual post. Um, so that's where you can promote current events, you can change it all the time. Uh, when they talk about using Linktree or Link Bio account, it's, a, it's an app that allows you to, and this is where I'm like, Jay, right, help me with this. Um, it's an app that allows you to track those links and track the click-throughs. So it's kind of nice to be like, did people actually follow the link from my post to this, to the registration page? Use stories, play with layouts. There's, you know, you know that if you're on Instagram, you can, do I want it in a quad? Do I want like this big picture bigger or not? So you can do that. Make sure that you're using hashtags. We've talked about that. Have a visually consistent feed. Don't just be sharing the same photos all the time, okay? <laughs> you want it to be different because if you just go onto a page and you're not necessarily following them right now, it's not pulling up on your feed, it's just gonna be a whole bunch of photos and if they see the same photo four times to say come to this cooking class, it's not gonna be as engaging. Make sure that this is, you know, remember it's an engagement platform and so you wanna be resharing other people's things and maybe you, know, maybe you see a post in your neighboring community ed district about something cool, you can reshare that and say, we offer this too. Here's a link. So 
emojis are big. And then make sure that you're using those shortened lengths, you know, if it's a bitly or a tiny URL or something, because otherwise it takes up all your characters, and we've already talked about the characters. And so what are some things about Twitter? Here's kind of the general audience of Twitter. 44% are between 18 and 24. 31% between 25 and 30. And 26% are between 30 and 49. As you notice, over 50, not tons of people on Twitter. OK? Um, I'm on Twitter mostly because of news, because all your media stations are on Twitter. So um, here's an education breakdown of those who are on Twitter. 13% have a high school diploma, 24% college education, 32% of those or more have, the, have a college education. So if you're thinking about marketing your ABE programs, is this where you're going to go? Probably not, right? Because those people aren't necessarily on your program. So limit hashtags. I can't tell you how many times I see a Twitter post and there's like eight hashtags on there. It's like, stop, 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 stop. LinkedIn is different. Hashtag, it's like just one or two hashtags, OK? Um, make sure you're using conversational tone. Twitter is very immediate. And so you want to make sure it's very conversational. You, emojis, uh, retweet and quote others. Um, I know that's really important to make sure that you're sharing other things that people are doing. Or maybe there's a teacher, one of your teachers posts something, and you can reshare that provide you have the right data privacy. Um, lean into your photos. Try using the polls on Twitter. And I would say that this is true with Facebook as well. And Instagram, they have great polling features. It's kind of a nice way to engage your audience. And then if there's a certain tweet that you want to have, like um, registration for our ECFE classes and preschool classes, right? We always know those fill up right away. So pin that on top. So. I've thrown a lot of stuff at you here, but um, let's talk about what's coming next, and then we can take some questions or anything. So um, we're continuing to update the microsite. We're adding more stories. You know, it's going to be a, it's a lot. It is a site. It's a website, right? So we want to keep sure live. We want to add things. That's all going to be watch your member news, because that's where we're going to say, hey, this is new. Hey, here's a new resource, something like that. Um, we're building that communications plan for MCEA members. Um, I know Jean was like, please don't talk to me until after the conference. <laughs> and so we're going to probably next week, we'll start pushing some stuff out. Um, and then we're updating and working with Wendy and updating the legislative platform. You know, the, the platform itself isn't changing, but we're going to try to, we're making it look and we've already pulled in some stories. And so probably pretty soon I'll have something for you, Wendy. Um, we're making it more visual and more aligned with the Here For You campaign. Because legislators get a whole bunch of stuff about we need more funding for X. But if I can tell you a story about how that ABE funding, how that ABE funding and program has influenced somebody, the legislator's going to listen to you more. So we're working with Rally on that. And then, like I said, we're finalizing that statewide media plan. And that'll have context. And so we'll put that on the microsite so you can access that and go, who, who are the media outlets? And so it's a, it's a revolving door. Um, I will say that. But the other thing I think I want to make sure that, we're, that I'm pulling into that media plan right now is multilingual media outlets. And I think those are really important to think about as our, as our communities change. Um, there's some awesome Spanish-speaking media outlets, both radio and print. There's Somali radio. There's you know, all sorts of different communities, Hmong radio, Hmong publications. And so I'm trying to pull those into the media outlets as well so that you can reach your community as, as far as wide as you can. Other than that, you know, this was really about moving beyond that stamp of that's community ed. Anytime we do marketing, we talk about building awareness, motivating action, and then creating adv advocates for it. So that's really our goal. So that is me talking really fast. Um, any questions you have, or do you want me to show you something else on the site, or questions about how you might use this in your own programs? Yeah. I just want to say kudos. Um, looks amazing and the practical uh, tools to use, like the Canva templates and I mean, thank you. This is going to be huge. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Well, I was just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you back what you said. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions about this? Yeah. Do you want us to use the that's community as like stamp on things like on certain marketing and stuff like that so that we like if someone moved from one location to the other, they'd be able to associate that it's from the same mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that that stamp is, is really important. And I think that was the original intent of that was to make it universal across the state. I looked to you all because you were there with that. But um, I think that's why we've included it in all the here for you graphics so that it's, it is part of like even when we did go back to, I can't find out where it is anyway, but it was somewhere there. Um, but really trying to make sure that the. Yeah, and I think the other component too is the like we always have the design with the circles, circles. The, and the dots. Even having that as a consistent connection piece. And so yeah. you know, if that goes kind of against your district communication guidelines or you know, anything like that, having different logos. Um, yeah. You know, I think yeah. having, you can brand it your You can way, see like the dots here reference. are all from that that's community ed. So really trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Because I know you were talking about that with, you know, how do we get Orinos to look like this? But yeah. So will you have those kind of graphic elements as downloads too? So that if we wanted to put some of that on our website, we don't have to go search for them where we can find circles. And that that's community ed pieces? Yeah. yeah, I think we can probably put the brand sheet so that we already have. have. brand guide, and all the information yeah. is on this little kit. I'm yep. Not sure where I know what like the JPEGs and everything that yep. we can download. Yep. All of that is going to be downloadable as well as the color. So if you do, you can type in the exact, if you want. Yeah, the hex color or something. Blues, um, mm -hmm. the color code. Yep. Um, and you can type in specifically if you want to like, add them to a, a current document. Yes. So there's a whole brand guide that goes. Yeah, I don't know if I, that's actually a really great question. I'm going to need to make sure that the tool, that we have the downloadable like image files of the that's community ed as well. I don't know if that's in there, but I'll make sure it is. What's that? Kara. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Are we going to be doing anything like universal, like campaign wide? Um, I think of like community ed is really bad in that we all have different names for everything. Like for child care. <laughs> um, what is it? They claim the Y was the largest child care. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, but really, if you look at community ed, we are the largest child care. It's just called so Adventure Club call or something different. Yeah. Like, are we going to do anything that is like a universal campaign for community ed? Yes. Yeah, yep, sure. absolutely. No, I think that's. I hadn't thought about it from that standpoint, but yes, we are because part of part of this, as we said, this was about the hub for the internal members, but we also have a plan going that MCEA to like here's some social media that MCEA will put out, and so hopefully you can reshare and talk about it. But I think those are great. Those are the kinds of things that we need to know. Like, there's school age care in every single community. It just might be called something different, right? And so I think that it's really important that we. And this is kind of like when I when I work with districts and we do redo a website and I say, I understand that that's what you call it internally. But if I'm a family who just moved there, I need it to be on the website as child care or school age care. And 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 I think about I was on trying to find what exactly your title was the other day on the 728 website. And it was like it listed it as child care. You know, yeah, it's Adventure Club. But. Adventure, I think. Yeah, very clever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, you know, it's about how do we make sure that people are looking for that specific program. I mean, generally people understand that early childhood is early childhood, but you know, I mean, I know in one district it's like, well, but there's centaur beginnings. Okay, but it's early childhood, right? So, yeah. And part of the conversation, to the valid point, uh, yeah. I have that conversation a lot with the committee and with the board, um, and part of the thought was we can roll out statewide, but we also know that every community has individual needs as well. So how are we kind of combating mm -hmm. both? And so the goal of this is to not only provide individual um, districts with these tools and, and um, strategies, but to have a statewide campaign that will then connect back. So then when you are looking, if you're seeing something from MCA, and then that would hopefully go into our phase two where we will launch it more and people can see the mm -hmm. MCA as a overall, this is where I go to understand what community ed has a whole. Um, if they're looking at it from a statewide perspective. So trying to make those connections. Yep. Like, in talking about it, we thought we could start with kind of building this from each community and then hopefully it right. grow. Then we can like all that. And MCA didn't have that much money to put everything into one. So, but, but I think the phased approach is good. And also, I think, no, I mean, you guys got a lot of money about it. No, it's great. 
Um, the coming soon where it says right there, this is where we really would like your help as well to say like, okay, I use this, but gosh, I downloaded it and it didn't work. This didn't work for me or something like that. So I just need to finish that survey, but um, that will be a place where we can look at that. We can, I mean, I'm going to, I'll have the results of it. We'll share it with the marketing committee, but it'll also be helpful for us at CISO to say, okay, that didn't work. How do, so that's kind of our evaluation piece. So just know that that's coming soon, but we thought, well, that's not as important because you're not using it yet anyway. So, <laughs> but well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts or questions? We have just a few more minutes. And when do you expect this will go live? I think you. I think if I recall, Gene does member newsletters every Thursday. Is that right? And so I'm thinking we're thinking next Thursday, like a week from. Right. Couple of weeks. Yeah.